Hey everybody, Richard Pie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up and assemble the Raspad 3 Raspberry Pi tablet. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to take our Raspad out of the case. I'm just going to set this aside real quick here. And we're going to get into the bottom here where we have all of our different parts and pieces. So here we have our screwdriver, a couple of our cables and connections in here. So we're just going to set all of these aside, move the box out of the way so we have a little area to work. And I'm actually going to put down just a little towel here just to put this tablet face down just so we don't scratch anything. All right, so once we flip this over, you'll notice that there's four holes on each of the corners here, and then there's one in the center. So inside each of these holes is a little screw. We need to unscrew each of these in order to take this back panel off. So I'm gonna use the provided screwdriver here. This is a really great screwdriver. It's actually got a magnetic tip. So when you do go in here and you unscrew the uh, screw inside, it'll actually be right on the uh, tip there. So we don't have to flip this over and start shaking it in order to get these screws out. So I'm gonna do that to each of these, and then I'll end up here with the middle one. All right, so I've got all of those out. So now we can just uh, flip this over, and you'll actually see up here, where is it? Over here on the right-hand side over by the power uh, button and micro SD card slot. There's a little piece right here where we can actually just put our finger in and just pull these apart. Comes out just like that. If you notice that you're struggling with this in any way, double check and make sure that you got all the screws because you definitely don't want to mess around with this and have to uh, fight it in any way because you could definitely do some damage, especially along here with these ports which hang out of the uh, side of the casing here. All right, so once we have this open, you can see that we actually have our main board right here on the right-hand side. So what we need to do first is we need to grab a Raspberry Pi 4. So here I have my Raspberry Pi 4 right here. I'm gonna take this out of the box just so I have it on hand, place it right there. So actually where this is going to go inside is, it's going to go and sit right here like this. You can see where these little holes are and you're just gonna line those up with the holes on your Raspberry Pi 4. So we're not going to secure this in just yet because we have to make a bunch of different connections here. So the first connection that we're going to look for in our bag of connections right here is our ethernet connection. So I'm just gonna pull each of these out one by one, just so we have them on hand here until we find that ethernet. So here is our ethernet. And that should be all of them. All right, so for our ethernet here, we're going to make that connection from our main board. You'll notice that it just clicks right into place. You don't have to wrestle with it at all. And then we'll connect it into our Raspberry Pi 4. And this is the reason we didn't go ahead and secure this to the uh, frame here yet, because we do want to have some mobility when we're making these connections. So once we have our ethernet cable connected, we're going to grab our USB 3 and we're gonna do the same thing there. So this is going to connect right here next to it. So you'll notice that it goes right into this slot. Helps if I have it going the correct way. Pretty much exactly the same way. And you wanna make sure that you go into one of the blue ones here. These are your USB 3. So I'm just gonna go in the bottom one there. Makes the most sense just so we can utilize this one at the top if we ever need to. All right, so once we have our USB 3 cable connecting the main board to the Raspberry Pi 4, we're gonna take our micro HDMI cables. You'll notice that we have two of these. So one is a little bit shorter, one is a little bit longer. The longer one actually goes out here into the furthest port, and the smaller one goes in here on the uh, closer one. So we're gonna do the smaller one first, just so we don't have to overlap these or you know, deal with anything being a uh, tight fit or anything like that. So I'm just going to slide that one in there. This is going to go up here to that first one. So you wanna make sure that everything lines up properly before you start forcing anything in. So in this case, it lines up perfectly. Make sure that both those are firmly connected and that will go ahead and do that longer one. And this one actually, just it could just be mine, but the way that this lines up as it comes is not correct. It won't ever go in that way. So I just have to actually twist this around 
the other way. So there is a little bit of twist in the longer one. Not sure if that's how it's gonna be for everybody's, but it is something that I noticed here on mine. So again, once you put both of those in, just make sure that everything is firmly secure and those connections are 100% in. So now you notice that we have over here just one more cable and this is going to be our type C cable. So this actually goes in right next to those micro HDMIs and then you'll notice over here as well where it makes that connection. So it doesn't matter which end you use, just firmly insert that into the type C port. Same thing down here. This gets to be a little bit tighter right here. So you'll notice that you do have to kind of wrestle this and that's where having this um, not secured in with those four screws does make it a little bit easier. So, so now you can just kind of lay this down now and then just push this type C cable around that micro HDMI cable. And you do want to make sure I have these, see how I have this micro HDMI going through this little, um, uh, I don't know what you'd call this little opening here. Make sure that you put that around the outside because your center screw when you go to put this back panel on is going to utilize this hole. So you definitely don't want to have to worry about your screw going into any of these cables and making any type of perforation. All right, so once all these cables have been fully connected and put in place, it's time to grab our FFC cable. And we're going to actually just take this out of the plastic bag. Now, be careful because there is a loose piece in here. I'm just going to set that loose piece aside for right now. We're going to take the actual cable itself. Now, your instructions will tell you to make the connection. Mine came already connected. So once we get this out of the bag, we're just going to insert it into the micro SD card slot on a Raspberry Pi 4. So again, this is another reason why we didn't secure those four screws into the Pi yet. So just pull this up, slide that into the micro SD card slot. It'll just slide into place. It doesn't click or anything like that. So once that's fully inserted into a Raspberry Pi 4, we're going to take the other end of our FFC cable and insert it into the micro SD card and button board, which is located directly next to it. So in order to do that, there's a little black piece here on this connection. We're just going to lift it up ever so slightly. We're gonna just bend it over the actual cable here, slide it into place, and then push that black piece down. And you'll notice that that fully secures it here, so I'm not able to pull it out, not that I'm giving it a strong tug or anything, but that does lock it into place there. So that connection is nice and firm. All right, so once this connection is made and everything is firmly in place, we're gonna actually take those four screws and actually now mount the Raspberry Pi 4 to the back of the housing here. So we're going to take these smaller screws, which look just like this, we're going to take those out. We're going to utilize four of them. So there's actually some extras here. Make sure that you just use the four because there's only four slots on the actual Raspberry Pi that we need to use to secure this in place. So the way that I do this is I actually start on the left hand side. It just works much easier this way. I'm going to just kind of pull these up into place just to get this started. Once I get the left side in, it'll be much easier to get the right. So I have that first screw in. So now for the second one, I do kind of have to wrestle this over into place just to line them up. But the good news is once you get that left side lined up, the right side will be pretty much right in place. So moving on now to the next one. This one I don't have to maneuver at all. It's just perfectly lined up now. And same thing down here in the bottom right corner. So now I do recommend just checking all your connections, making sure everything is firmly in place because as you saw, we did have to kind of wrestle this into place, obviously bending this um, USB 3 connection. So just give everything a little push, make sure that everything is firmly in place. These are all really made nicely, so you don't have to worry about pinching any of these cables or anything like that. So now we're going to actually put our heat sinks down. So I'll start with the larger one here. This will go right here on our Raspberry Pi 4. Next, we'll do the second larger one. And now our smaller one. So now they only give you three heat sinks, not four, which for the Raspberry Pi 4, you could definitely utilize four if you have them. Doesn't make a huge difference, but um, you can see here that one of them is missing, but 
not a big deal whatsoever. So the last thing we need to do is we need to take this little ASIL shim right here. This actually came out of the little baggie um, along with this last cable that we used. And we're actually going to, you'll notice that there's six little pin holes here. They're gonna slide right over the uh, pins up here on our Raspberry Pi foreboard. So be super careful because it is really easy to bend these and you don't wanna do that. So just make sure that they're lined up. Definitely wanna be really careful here and you're just gonna slide them down. And you can actually use the head of your screwdriver just to slide them down ever so slightly. You don't wanna push them down too far. Just go as far as they actually uh, will allow. You're not gonna force them and smash them down or anything like that. All right, so that's everything that we need to do in terms of setting up the Raspberry Pi with the main board here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our cooling fan. And that's gonna be onto the top of our housing here. So we're gonna actually take out the cooling fan from the package. And the way this is gonna sit is you're going to put the label down right here, just like so, right in that position there. And we're gonna grab our screws. There's four screws that lock this into place. These are gonna be the longer screws. So we have the shorter ones, which are right here. Those are for attaching the Raspberry Pi to the uh, housing like we just did. So you want the longer ones. These are what you are gonna to use to secure your cooling fan to the top side. So with these, just make sure that you don't over tighten them. If you really crank down on these, since you're going into plastic here, it's super easy to strip these. So I'm just going until it gets tight and I give it just the slightest bit more. So right here, it got tight, just half a turn more. That's all you need to do. This isn't going to uh, fly off or anything like that. So we really don't need to go crazy uh, locking this down. So once that's done, we're gonna take the top, flip it over. You'll notice this connection right here. That connection is gonna go right here on our main board. You'll see the nice little white spot there where this just slides and locks into place. So just firmly give it a little push. Again, like everything else here, don't go super crazy, but that's really all you need to do there. So once that's done, we're just gonna, again, just triple check all of our connections here. I know we've checked throughout the uh, many steps of getting this into place, but um, definitely make sure that everything didn't get shifted or loosen up or anything. And then I'm just going to straighten this out again. I'm gonna keep this little um, screw hole here clear. Make sure that none of your cables are sitting in here because you're going to need that in order for this piece right here to line up. So that is all we need to do. We're going to just put the uh, bottom down. It'll click right into place just like that. And then we're going to take our original screws that we had when we first took the uh, five out, four in the corners, one dead center there. And we're going to just start screwing those right back in. So I'm going to start with the center one. That's kind of what stabilizes everything here. And then we'll go to those four on the outer corners there. All right, so that's all we need to do in order to start using our Raspad tablet. Next thing we'll do is we'll just add a micro SD card into the micro SD card slot. You can use either a Raspad OS, Raspberry Pi OS, or RetroPie in order to get started using your Raspad 3 tablet.